So our topic of the week for this week is how to identify when you're on the right track for answering the assignment question. So this has been brought to us by student feedback from students and uh, it's actually something that I've been wanting to address for a while. So we've come together and we've come up with a number of points of advice. I think we've got an odd number. I think it's five. Yeah, we've got five pieces of advice for how you can make sure that you're on the right track when you're answering the question. A lot of this is just going is finding ways of checking and going back and considering and consolidating, consolidating what you know about the question. And the first piece of advice that I have is when you are researching, when you are writing, always have that question visible and keep checking it back. Because if you don't keep checking it or you check it once at the start and then you do all your research and then check it again, you might realise that you've gone off on a tangent or you've spotted something interesting and gone down that rabbit hole. Or you might find that you've only covered one element in a lot of depth but not another. So always keep that question in mind. And if you've started with research questions and questions to answer, that can help you uh, to make sure you've actually hit everything. Uh, but always look back to the question just to make sure that you're on the right lines when researching and add those checks and balances in. So I'd say look at look back at it when you're researching, look back at it when you're writing, look at it again when you're proofreading. Throughout the process, keep making sure that you've checked to make sure that you're answering the question and every element of that question that you're supposed to. So, Naomi, do you have any advice on this matter? Yes, although I'm going to talk about that for a bit first. So, yes, yeah, so this is something I definitely need to do. Um, I keep myself on topic, and I think that's a really good point, actually. I, that has never occurred to me to do when I'm answering questions, actually keep the question there. Maybe I should do that for podcasts. Keep yeah. the question visibly in front of me. Um, so... I want to talk my point about, and this is about points. So we, we talk sometimes about structuring your paragraphs and we talk about point, evidence, explain, sometimes criticise, link um, for paragraph structure. We've got some great videos on that on our channel. Check them out. Um, but the first bit of that is the point. So if you have organised your paragraphs into a point, evidence, explain structure, you should be able to very quickly find your point. You should know what that point is. You should ideally know what the point of your paragraph is. Generally, that's the whole idea. Um, so check that that point, each individual point in each individual paragraph is relevant to your question. So this will help you with word count. It will help you with relevance, all sorts of things. Look at your point and check, is that answering the question? Is it relevant? Does it impact on what I'm trying to say? Alex, your I've turn. I've just put on screen a YouTube video that uh, we discuss uh, that paragraph structure in depth that you can then go back to and have a look at and that can really help you to keep relevance and to make sure that what you're talking about is actually relevant to the question so I would recommend checking that out uh, for a general assignment but there's always that key question at the end which is um, how does this paragraph actually answer the question where you link back uh, what you said in that paragraph using the keywords that are in it to show this is how it's answered and that I've found has always been a really good rule of thumb to me to try and make it as clear as I can, this is how I've answered it. Because if you can say, look, this is how my work is relevant, then that can help you to prove that you're actually answering the question. Whereas if you read a paragraph back and you go, actually, how is this relevant? Are you clutching at straws as to how it is? You might then realise that it's probably time to reevaluate that or to find ways of making it more relevant. And if you can't do that, then just scrap it and find something that is more relevant to use. Pardon me. Um, and I would say with regard to that, if you believe that it is relevant, but you think I've not actually made that point well enough, definitely take the time to make that relevance um, visible. I'm, I'm going to gazump Alex because Alex is just about to talk about reading around the subject area. So when we say make sure that what you're putting is relevant to the question, it doesn't mean that you need to be narrow necessarily, because it might be that a point that you learnt about in a different part of the module or a point that you learnt in another module entirely is relevant to your question. Mm -hmm. So don't be scared of that. And that is, uh, that's when you start, um, re that's, when you're, that's when you're flying, um, in my opinion, is when you start pulling those links between modules, between ideas, between topics. So don't be afraid of something, of, of, of don't keep your confidence that, that point's relevant if you know that point is relevant keep your confidence in that and just make sure you are explicitly showing how that point is relevant so again it's this balance between being too narrow and too broad hmm. i think that's a very very important point naomi it's um you, you shouldn't look at a module within the small chamber of knowledge that's within that you should look at it by the broader frame of what you've learned um 
and obviously make sure that, that is relevant and make sure to justify why it's relevant uh, and do talk about things that have been mentioned within that module but don't be afraid to do a little to actually talk about things that are wider because wider research can first of all tell you if you've missed something but you can also enhance what you've talked about so don't be afraid of going over the limits of what you've been taught provided that you can explain why it's relevant and how it helps to answer the question yeah Alex has gone to let Gimli in. Um, so <laughs> my, my um, next tip is to talk to someone about it. And this can be really um, useful if you find someone that doesn't know anything about your subject. Um, you can talk them through the points you've made and check that they think you've answered the question or give them a draft of your assignment or a plan or anything like that. But ask someone else's opinion. That can be really, really key. Um, and someone without subject knowledge might have that fresh perspective that they can then say, actually, I don't think you have answered. I, if they don't understand your answer to the question or how you've answered the question, then it might be that you've not answered it yet. So um, talk to someone can be a really, um, a really good idea. Apologies for any background noise then, by the way. I forgot to bring my mic when my cat was walking around. I just turned off my video instead. Yes. So speaking about asking friends, we've asked oh, some smooth. <laughs> we've asked some students uh, for some advice relating to um, what their first steps are when they receive or first receive an assignment. If you have any tips that you would like to share with us, feel free to add them within the chat today. Uh, but we've got two student tips that we have today that I'm going to read out now. And Naomi, okay, if she wants to, can comment on them. So the first tip from students is. The first steps for me are to highlight the key terms, uh, to highlight the key terms in the question, and to make sure I understand them before doing anything else. And again, that's exactly what we've been saying. So that student is on the right lines. Make sure you understand what you expected to do and do it. Yeah. Feedback. I'm just thinking in terms of identifying those key terms. If you've had feedback in the past that you have not answered a question properly, it might be worth going back to that feedback, looking at the feedback specifically, looking at the, your previous questions in that light and seeing if you can see which key terms you missed, because that might really help you develop that skill. Yes, uh, I, I agree. The second piece of advice from students that is really, again, useful is that their first step is to put the important assignment dates in their calendar. And... Actually, that is something that I do straight away. Make sure you know when it's in for, because getting it out by a week that can be that can put you in trouble. So do know um, when it's in for, and do make sure that you have that solidly planned out. 